Good afternoon. This is uh, Professor David Lurcher from the uh, School of Information at San Jose State University, and I'm thrilled today to, to introduce to you Christy Harp from the Atlanta area. And Christy, uh, introduce yourself and your school to us. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Christy Harp, and I'm a media specialist at Ola Middle School, which is in Henry County. We're a suburb of Atlanta. Um, our school is about 1,200 students, and it's a suburban school, so we have um, maybe maybe about 30% free and reduced lunch students, and maybe, I would say, a very small ELL population, and maybe about a 15 to 20% ESE population. Um, I've been doing this for a while, maybe, goodness, maybe 23 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. And I understand that one of the really uh, great uh, initiatives you have uh, uh, is directed at creativity and technology. Tell us about that. Yes, um, I noticed that with the students I see and also my own children that it's really, um, I see a lot of students being consumers of things, but not necessarily creators. And I feel like this is sort of a, a knowledge economy that we're that they are going to be in. And so some of the projects we do here at my school, I try to work with the teachers to help make creative projects. So one thing we have, which is for all grade levels, it's um, it's called the Student Media Festival. And it's where students create, um, it could be about anything that they're interested in. So for example, you have some students making a video about how to cook, make chocolate chip cookies or how to um, take care of your dog or things like that, but also it could be to inform. So you've had a student do a podcast about current events or a student do a website about Canada or even um, some of the book trailers that we use in class, I can take those, some of the best projects and use those. So they basically can make a website, a video, um, sequential stills, which is like a slideshow or um, animation. And they turn these in and we have sort of, we judge them at the school level and then they go on to the county level. So it's really, this is something we do that everyone's welcome to do it. It's optional for the students. So because it's optional, we get some good projects because they're students that really wanted to do them. And then we have a county one and then it goes on to the state level. So that's one thing, but also working with teachers um, to help help the students do a project that kind of explains what they know, like a culminating thing to show something that they've mastered. So for example, we're really big on book trailers, um, infographics and websites. We've, um, should I keep going? Yeah. I know I'm kind of going on for a while here. Do you want me to keep explaining a little bit more? Or? Sure. Well, talk to us about um, projects you do with struggling students. Yes, um, we do the same projects with the struggling students as far as like the entire, um, we just finished a project where our entire sixth grade chose a book for during the month of February that was had a an African-American protagonist or a strong female protagonist. And they read the book over the month of February and then they came back and we all made a book trailer on um, this thing called Adobe Express. And the book trailer would have, um, there was a script they had to do first before they were even allowed to touch the computer because they would play on the computer. We want to make sure they really know, you know, they know what they're doing. So they wrote it on a script and then it was approved by me or the teacher. Then they start making their slides and their voiceover. And we did this with all 400 of our sixth graders. And that includes our gifted, regular ed and our ESC students. And I believe because I work with them that our ESE students are held to the same standards. They do the same project. It just takes a little more scaffolding. So for example, the teacher, before they come to me, um, the teacher worked with them and kind of went over what they're going to do and what goes on each slide on the script. So they started working on their script before they came to me. And then um, when they came to me, they already had their script ready. So we had two days to work on the actual slideshow. Whereas the other classes, they came to me knowing nothing, and we just started with script on day one and then slideshow on day two. And if they don't do their work, then they have to finish it on their own. So I know it seems like a lot of students, but really it was just two days per teacher over the course of a month. So, um, and we get better at it each year. So we're doing this 
with another group, but it's different. So we had a seventh grade class read Jurassic Park. It was a um, sort of like a, a gifted, a majority like high readers class, and it was a science class. So they read it to talk about DNA and ethics and what's ethical and what's not. And then she also did the book trailer, but the questions were more specific. So they talked about, you know, what, how is this book not true? Like, how did this, um, could this really happen? What's ethical, that sort of thing. But I do believe we, as long as you have the scaffolding in place and you take the time, the ESE students would do the same as our regular ed students. Tell us about the boxes thing that you told me about briefly. Uh, how do the struggling students do versus the gifted kids? <laughs> yes, um, so we have these things I'll show you. It's it's breakout EDU, so they're just the simple boxes. There's really nothing, nothing in here right now, but um, we I get some of the games from the breakout EDU website or we either make them ourselves. So it's basically an escape room and they come to the library and I have this big story. I tell them like, oh, I need your help finding this, whatever it is we're looking for. But instead of trying to escape the library, they have to work together in teams to break out, break into this box. And it has five locks on it and there's clues all around them. So they have a lot of fun with it. But the teams that do the best, that win sort of, to win, you wanna be the first one to break out. You definitely don't wanna be the one that never breaks out. But um, the teams that do the best are the ones that communicate the most and work together. And so I've found that with doing these with all of the types of students in our school, that the gifted students actually struggle and argue with each other. They will still break out sometimes, but they argue because a lot of times you have strong personalities or people that think that they're right and they don't want to give in. But then I found that our um, special ed students actually do really well at this. So they wow. do work together and it, it's great. So they, they're really excited about it. And even though it's not necessarily like using computers, like that type of technology, they love it. So that's one of the neatest things that we do. And it takes a lot of planning, you know, like a couple of days just to kind of maybe a, a couple hours, maybe. But once you have the materials, you can use them over and over again. And it's, I will say, I've done this for many years and that's the most fun that our students have. And they're really, you could say, look around and there's nobody that is not engaged at that point. Like everybody is just into it. Yeah, that's, that's great. So with all this technology, uh, what, do, what kind of support does the organization have to give to make all the technology work and uh, so that it's contributing to teaching and learning, you know, without major interruptions or that kind of thing? What, what's going on there? I would say definitely um, we have, Myself, a halftime para, and we have a full time. Um, in she's called an ITP instructional technology para. Her job is helping our students because they're um, each student has their own Chromebook. Um, we also have another person who is help there to help teachers. But I would say definitely. Um, so we have all these technology supports to make sure things are working. I would also say from the administrative point, we really need to make sure you know that the media centers have the parapro or have some help in there or just supported. Um, my administrators have always been great with just supporting my ideas or things that I wanna try and really letting us um, not really pulling my parapro very much to do other duties or me so that we're able to really work with the teachers. I think the more that I'm able to work with the teachers and go to their planning and help teach their class, the more we're going to get out of this for our students. Yeah, exactly. So um, with all of this effort on creativity, technology, and question boxes and sort of things, what's your bottom line of the whole reason that you're, you're still excited about being a librarian? Um, I feel like I have the most fun job in the school because I'm not... I get to know these kids for three years. Um, I get to be everybody's teacher. So even if a student isn't an avid reader and you know they're not someone I see like that, I'm still going to have a relationship with them. I'm still gonna help them in some way. Um, I think it's just really great that I get to work with the teachers and the students and just kind of be that person to help push them to be more creative. So I like to use technology to help the teachers integrate, um, integrate technology and kind of help to push our students from being consumers to being creators. I think that's important. 
Well, that's really, I think, the central message of, of all of education, right? So, you know, we're really uh, adults working uh, with the students right at the center of our attention. Well, thank you so much, very, uh, very much, Christy, for uh, your uh, brilliance and uh, <clears throat> the kinds of things that you do. And we thank you very much for the for the spending the time for this interview. And we'll say goodbye to you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me.